So we've played around with liquid metal previously on the channel, applying it to a CPU die contact area, for example, when deleting a CPU. But today we're bringing it back to see what effect it has on a low profile CPU cooler. It's no secret that small form factor systems are a big focus for this channel, where we're trying to optimize for as much cooling performance as we can in such a tiny space. I'm interested to see whether applying liquid metal underneath the CPU cooler's cold plate could actually help gain a bit of head room for overclocking. And of course you could apply these results to a larger tower cooler or AIOs, but usually those coolers are already effective enough with enough overclocking headroom. For those of you who are new to these style of tests, the idea is that by using liquid metal, which is a dense, very thermally conductive material as opposed to thermal paste, you're able to transfer a lot more heat effectively between a heat conductor and a heat sink. In this case, we're talking about the heat coming off of a CPU's heat spreader and then being cooled by a heat sink and fan. So today we're using my main editing system inside the Ghost S1 and and I thought this would be a pretty good opportunity to test a new CPU cooler that I had sent to me from Rajentech, that is the Palace 120. So this CPU cooler uh, has a CPU cooler height of 68 millimeters, which means that it just fits inside the Ghost S1, which maxes out at 68 millimeters. My previous CPU cooler maxes out at around 66 or 67, I believe. So it did have uh, about a one or two mil gap. This one uh, is right on the side panel as we will see. And so apart from testing liquid metal today, we will be throwing this in the Ghost S1 and testing it against the Noctua NHL12, which so far is the most effective CPU cooler that I've tested in this case. So the Palace 120 is mounted on the 8700K. No issues with installation, although there are a lot of steps involved as you guys saw, but that's okay because build quality is very good. In terms of fitting it into the Ghost S1 though, well, I basically would not recommend it for this case. As I mentioned previously, the max CPU cooler height in the Ghost S1 is 68 millimeters, and the height of the Palace 120 is also 68 millimeters. You're basically going to have to force that side panel on to get it over the fan. That's something I definitely don't recommend with such a premium case. Thermal performance was excellent though, which was great to see. We are just using the standard paste here before using liquid metal, and here it's pretty much right on par with the Noctua L12. The slim fan spins at a max of 1500 RPM, and is pretty quiet, although as soon as you put the fan against a side panel, there will be some noise generated from turbulence. So now that we have our baseline result for this cooler, let's go ahead and throw on some liquid metal. I'm using Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot here as I've had great results with this in the past and I've seen no problems with it even after several months of use. So here I'm applying a pinhead amount of liquid metal onto the CPU's heat spreader and then just taking a few minutes to spread it out evenly over the surface. Make sure it doesn't spill or get in contact with anything else. This stuff is very messy and again is electrically conductive. Do the same for the bottom of the CPU cooler as well and do make sure it's not an aluminium cold plate. Otherwise Otherwise, there will be a chemical reaction. Thankfully, the Palace 120 is copper since it's just the heat pipes. And so far, every Noctua cold plate that I've encountered is nickel plated copper, so they'll be fine also. And so for liquid metal versus a standard thermal paste, we're looking at about a three to three and a half degree difference with this CPU and cooler. That's definitely significant and measurable, although realistically, it's not going to allow any real gain in overclocking, maybe an additional 20 to 30 millivolts on the V-Core, if that. Keep in mind that these tests were done with an 8700 
5700K pulling about 100 watts or so at load, and so you'd probably see a larger difference with a higher TDP CPU and cooler. There, there's a lot more heat transferred from the CPU and the CPU cooler, so there's a lot more work for the liquid metal or the thermal paste to do. Also keep in mind here that we are just using a standard paste here for comparison. You would still likely see a slight decrease with something more premium like Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut, that paste has a very high thermal conductivity for a paste at 12.5 watts per meter Kelvin. So with liquid metal previously, we've seen a significant difference when deleting 7th and 8th gen Intel CPUs because the thermal material needs to conduct heat between a rather large gap, that is between the CPU die contact and the heat spreader. When it comes to CPU coolers though, don't expect a large reduction at all, especially if you're using a mainstream desktop CPU like the 8700K. For Skylake X or Threadripper CPUs, there may be additional benefit by using liquid metal between the heat spreader and the CPU cooler. That is something that I do plan on testing in the future, but I can't confirm those results just yet. So guys, let me know your thoughts down below on these results, uh, whether you think it's a worthwhile improvement or not. I'll probably just stick to paste, but I am uh, interested to retest this with some high TDP CPUs in the future. As always, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.